Welcome to Blindfold Chess number 4. In this series of videos, I play a blindfold chess game, meaning that I won't be able to see any piece and I'll be staring at an empty chessboard. You, the viewer, will get to see what's going on. Maybe you can pause the video from time to time, try to follow the variations I'm talking about, and in that way we can all learn. Okay, we found a game. We're playing with the white pieces, I think. Yeah, there we go. Good luck to black. We're gonna play pawn to e4. Uh, and black responds with c5. This is still in defense. In this position, we have many options. We have knight f3. Uh, I think we're gonna play knight e3. I can play the wing gambit right away with b4. There's the smith mora with d4 and c3. But I'm gonna play, as I said, knight f3, which is normally the most natural way of continuing. Natural continuation, I should say. Pawn to e6. In this position, I, th I, I would like to play b4. And this is known as the wing gambit um delayed when you delay something i could have done it directly one move ago but because i did it in the second move then now or well i should say in the third move i i it's known as the delayed wing gambit i'm gonna play d4 now if black plays d5 i play e5 this is some sort of french and well in exchange of the pawn i have a knight on f3 which counts as one move of development and I get to put my bishop on d3 without worrying about knight b4, funnily enough, because there's a black pawn on b4. I'm going to occupy space. Normally in the French, this is a French structure. In this French structure, the bishop on c8 suffers quite a lot. If you look at all the pawns here, that's, that's a big problem. On f7, e6, and d5. That's what we call the bishop being inside the pawn chain. If the bishop was on f5, that would be outside the pawn chain. So I'm going to play e5. I'm expecting black to play natural looking moves, knight c6, bishop e7, f6, knight h6. The question is what, what move is black going to play first? If black strikes with f6 first, I feel like that's going to backfire pretty quickly. Oh my goodness, black goes for f5, interesting. So f5 allows me to take en passant. The question is do I want to do that? If I don't, I get, I get no more chance to do it. Meaning that this is my only chance to play en passant, that's the role of en passant. And if I don't take, black is pretty happy, or maybe that's but what black is claiming, because now black closes the position a little bit. And when you're down in development, oh my goodness. Sorry about that, my camera battery ran out. Back to the position, we just waited like a minute, it's okay. Black just played f5, and my question is, should I take en passant, or should I leave that pawn there, and maybe potentially use it in my favor with h3, g4? Um, so far, I think... I, I was tempted to take en passant. If black takes with the knight, then there's a hole on e5 that potentially I could use for my pieces. But if I don't take, we continue to have more space, and I can use h3, g4 in the future to my advantage. I think I'm gonna play... This is a little bit counterproductive or, or counterintuitive, but I'm maybe h4, h5. Trying to create weaknesses with h6. E takes f6, g takes f6. Is that surviving for black? I feel like not. I feel like my move. I, I can play queen h5 at some point. Okay, I'm gonna play h4. We're we already thought for a long time. I'm gonna try to gain space. I'm not gonna open the position. Maybe if I open the open up the position, black will get development with knight takes f6. So, and even though I do create a weakness, a well, weak square on e5. It's difficult to occupy. I can play knight e5, knight c6, bishop b5, bishop d7, bishop takes, bishop takes c6, and I would have an outpost on e5. But um, knight d7 is always in the air, maybe. Maybe I should have gone for that. We have... A... Yeah. But the bishop on d6 could potentially trade that. The bishop for the knight on e5. So I'm pretty happy with my decision on h4. I still have an advantage in space, as I said. And h5, h6 is a very typical idea in this structure as white. Opponent is thinking. Currently, my opponent doesn't have any minor piece out. As far as I'm concerned, e4, c5, knight f3, e6, b4, c takes b4, d4, d5, e5, f5. Yep. Yeah. h4. And my opponent has no minor pieces, so my opponent is lacking development. And in the meantime, I, I'm, I'm already thinking about crazy things like h5, g4, knight h4. Yeah, it's, I'm not claiming I have an advantage or anything. I also have a3 ideas, Banco style, trying to sacrifice another pawn for the sake of getting my pieces out. Because this, this pawn on b4 currently is a little bit of a pain. <laughs> so I want to get rid of it. Bishop d7, interesting move. 
In, in this kind of French positions, very often the bishop wants to get traded on b5. Not now, I would be able to take the bishop. But of course, if black gets a6 and bishop b5, strategically, that's what black wants. So, already there, I'm thinking about that. What else am I, what am I, what else am I thinking about? Well, bishop d3 I could play with a potential g4, f takes g4, knight g5 idea. Attacking on h7, maybe b b queen takes g4, and if h6 in that line, and I'm going to repeat... Bishop d3, d3 would threaten g4, f takes g4, knight g5, and if h6, bishop g6. Maybe I want to go for bishop d3. Am I worried about... Am I worried about... Uh, am I worried about a6? I don't think so. I'm going to play bishop d3. Just continue developing. g4, as I said, is a pawn break that I'm constantly looking at, trying to make it work. A little bit of a sad move would be h5. And I say sad from two perspectives, actually. This is maybe not the best way of explaining this. But h5 would stop my g4. But at the same time, it would give me rook h3, rook g3 ideas. And the g5 square. So h5, double-edged. Double-edged move. Black can go a6 or queen a5. Queen a5 looks suspicious. I, I think I'm going to play knight bd2. And then knight b3, hitting that queen potentially. But I'm trying to make queen b6, queen a5 ideas for the sake of bishop b5. There we go. We got queen b6. But the question is, is white or is black in time to do all of these things? Because it seems like black is being a little bit uh, provocative. All, all like Moving the queen early in the game. Trying to get this idea. Not moving all the other pieces. Everything's a little bit... A little bit hanging on a thread. Let's see, what can I play? I can play a4 to prevent this idea. And if b takes a3, knight takes a3, once again, we're preventing that idea. We're getting ready for rook b1 as well, potentially harassing that queen. If we continue with the previous idea I was mentioning with g4, f takes g4, knight g5, queen takes d4, then I have bishop g6, and I'm winning the queen. So, is that true? Yeah, it is. So maybe I should go for g4, f takes g4, Knight g5. I'm threatening to take on g4. Knight queen takes g4. Ah, but there's knight h6. That's a little bit annoying. Knight takes h7, though. Okay, I'm gonna go for this craziness. I like the idea of, of making things complicated because I have better development than, than black. And if I manage to open things up, potentially I will start creating threats right away. On top of that, this queen takes d4 trick may happen you never know yeah in this position a4 was also another option if black continues bishop b5 ignoring me um i'm just gonna take on f5 uh bishop bishop takes the three queen takes d3 black is losing a pawn or i in other words i'm getting my pawn back but in a much better position because i have better development better pawn structure uh better king safety david your king is in the middle how come is that better king safety well my king is not near any of, any of my black of the black pieces, but in the meantime, this king on e8 may get checked from h5, from g6 if the pawn on h7 moves. There's some all sorts of motives. For example, let's say f takes g4 in this position. Um, my knight is on f3, right? Yeah. F takes g4 in this position, knight g5, h6. As I said, bishop g6. So that's gonna happen. It seems. I'm gonna play knight g5 in this position. If h6, bishop g6 is a kind of a problem. Where are you gonna put the what are you gonna put the, the king? King d8, knight f7 is a fork. King e7, knight f7 is still there. And not only that, but okay, I am threatening to take on h8. But I'm also threatening to take on g4. Yeah. With a pawn on e5, it's pretty annoying. I could even go for a3 ideas to try to take on b4 and get my bishop to a3. But I think that's too much. Let me just visualize this very quickly. Oh, oh wait. It seems like my opponent fell into the trap. e4, c5, knight f3, e6, b4, c takes b4, d4, d5, e5. Oh, my opponent resigned. There we go. Yep, I suspected that bishop g6 was winning the queen and my opponent resigned, meaning that my opponent did realize that the queen was blundered. Well, there we go. I think that the interesting thing about this game is... When you're playing this kind of gambits, you don't realize how dangerous it is to get so much activity in exchange of the pawn. So you are losing a pawn, 
but you don't realize that the compensation in exchange is long term. You don't have to get the pawn back right away. You just have to activate your pieces and the rest is going to, well, flow. However, the game flows, you will be asked other questions. You will have to answer them in the right way. For instance, this question of playing f5, should we take en passant or should we keep the things as, as, as closed as they are? I think keeping things as closed as they were was a good decision to claim that we have an advantage and kind of keeping the the st the same status of the position thank you very much for watching if you have any questions if you have any suggestions please let me know subscribe give a like that would really help me a lot i would appreciate it and as always have a nice day